So the, the most key thing here that we understand about graphing is so we're just keeping track of the input and the output. What did you put in and what did you get out? And if you can understand that about a, a function or, or, or a, well, yeah, about a function that is input and output, then it's going to be so much easier for you to cover all sorts of topics up and through calculus for many semesters of calculus. That's really, really important. You put something into a function and you get something out. Okay. Pretty, pretty simple too. So that really important thing is a pretty simple thing. Uh, so all I'm really wanting to do is get some input-output pairs that I can put on the graph, then I can draw the graph. Uh, reasonably accurately. And like I said before, you can just plug anything you want in for x, see what happens, see what you get out for y, and plot that point, and plot another point, and plot another point, and plot another point, until this graph starts to take shape. Okay? Uh, if you put in, if you put in like a 1, like 1 seems like a reasonable number, so you see what's half of 1, and you put 1 plus 1 plus 3, and we have 1, well, that's 4 to the 4th. 4 to the 4th gets real big. Right? 1 seemed like good, it was pretty small, but then you add 3 to it, it becomes 4 to the 4th, and that's like 216? No, is that right? 64, 256. Two, yeah, 256. 256 plus 1, 257, even worse. So it's so big that you don't really want to graph that. Too big. So why was it so big? Oh, because it was to the fourth power. Why? How do I get to the fourth power? I put a one there. Uh, if I put a zero there, that'll still be four to the third. That'll be pretty big. If I put a, uh, a negative one there, I'll get four squared. That's a little better. Right? Four squared is only sixteen. That's not too big. Negative three, you get a zero, and this be one. Okay, so even better. If I put a negative one there, let's get put a negative three there. Negative three plus three is a zero. That's real small. Four to the zero is one. And add one, I just get two. Right? So when I talk about moving the graph left and right and up and down, that's all based on the, these x values that we like to use, or these exponent values that we like to use. Okay, so putting in one, I mean, we might as well, uh, you know, write it down. You got one comma two fifty seven, but two fifty seven is so big we don't want to graph it. We want to get some values that we can graph, uh, like actually put on the graph, and they're not so huge. So like right now, I'm just pretending like I have no idea about this function, but I just got this 257, and it's way too big. And then I realized, whenever this exponent is big, the number that I get out from the function is going to be very big. So I want to use some smaller exponent values. So I'll plug in uh, what negative 3 was suggested. Negative 3 plus 3 plus 1. So 4 to the 0 plus 1. That's 1 plus 1. That's 2. That's much better. Negative 3 comma 2. There's a point that I can actually reasonably plot. Negative 3 comma 2. And then negative 2 plus 3. So then negative 2, also good. Negative 2 equals 4 to the negative 2 plus 3 plus 1. That's 4 to the 1 plus 1. That's just 5. Not too big. So negative 2 comma 5. All right. Negative 2 comma 2, 3, 4. So it seems like negative 2, negative 3, these are a little better. If you go to negative 1, that won't be too bad, but then we're going to be up at 17. Uh, so maybe we'll just go this way a little bit more. We'll go to negative uh, 4, see what happens there. Let's erase that stuff. Negative 4 seems like it might. Four to the negative four plus three plus one. So it's input, output, input, output. Just putting something in and see what comes out. Four to the negative one plus one. What's four to the negative one? One four. One four. So one fourth plus one. One and a fourth. One and five fourths. Negative four. Negative four and uh, five <coughs> fourths. Right? One and a fourth. One and a little bit more than a fourth. No 
notice we have this plus one. We have one, and as we move into the negative numbers, we're gonna have four to the negative number, which is gonna be just the reciprocal, it's gonna be one fourth to some power. One fourth to some power is gonna be a very, 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 very small number uh, in, in no time, uh, in, in no time, yeah. no time flat. I don't know what I'm saying. But we're gonna take one, we're gonna add like a smaller and smaller and smaller number as we put in x's that are more and more and more negative. Does that make sense? So we put in uh, negative four, we get five fourths, so that's just one fourth above one is four fourths, five fourths is one more fourth than that. Uh, let's do one more, just to see what's happening here. Put a negative five in there, four to the negative five plus three is one, that's four to the negative two is one. Remember when we raise to a negative power, let's just deal with the negative, that'd be one fourth squared plus one. What's one fourth squared? One sixteenth. One sixteenth. So we have one and one sixteenth, or seventeen sixteenths, Go to one and go one sixteenth more than that. There's another one, negative five and uh, seventeen sixteenths. Well, I'm just just barely above one here. And like I was saying this a little earlier, that's just where we're always going to be wrong. No matter where or what value of x we put in in the negative direction, we're always just going to be barely above the one. We're never gonna drop below that. That's why we put that horizontal line there to say, it's kind of a guiding line to say, we're never gonna get below there. So negative five and one sixteenth above the one line. Okay, I think I see what's happening here. Uh, we, we talked about putting a negative one, we're gonna get 17, it's just way up there. Uh, we put in uh, one, we did that, so what is it, 257? I mean, it's just really, it's escalating really quickly. We're gonna have to, we're gonna try and hit 17 by the time we get to negative one. We're gonna try and uh, put zero in there. We try to hit 67, no, 65, 65. So we put zero in there, we're gonna get 64 plus one, 65. And forever getting closer and closer and closer to one, but never quite getting there. cleared it up and everything is like crystal. But are there any questions at all? If that wasn't completely crystal clear then, then uh, <coughs> and, and you had trouble with this on the previous, then there's probably a video waiting for you to watch. Okay, and as soon as I get that uh, information from you, I'll share that folder with you. And, uh, and, and you know, kind of long term, that folder, now you'll, you'll just always go to that folder. We won't have to email back and forth or anything. That folder will just get more stuff put in there that I want to share with you as time goes on. Um, I also want to just go back through this maybe in a more um, structured, regimented way because now I'm kind of getting it a little better. Like, uh, I, I get that I don't want the exponent to be too big because if it's, if it's too big, it doesn't even have to be that big. If, the ex if I put in one, the exponent will be four, and I'm up at 257, way, way too big. Right? So I like to pick uh, values for x that give me nice exponents. I like to take four to reasonably sized exponents. When I have something here in the exponent, I like it to be not too big. Right? So if this is my exponent, the numbers that I like to be up here, so we've talked about being negative one, zero, one. I like those, those three are very easy. When I take four to the negative one, it's just one fourth. When I take four to the zero, just like anything to the zero, is one, and then four to the one is just four. Okay. Three good points, those three points give me a really good idea of how steep this graph should be, where it should be, all that kind of stuff. All right. So, I always like my exponent to be negative one, zero, and one. Here's where the shift comes from, the shift to the left, three. Because it comes out that th the x needs to be like smaller because it's going to get three added to it and bring it up to negative one, zero, and one. So 
What does x need to be so that we get a, a, an exponent of negative 1? Negative 4. Negative 4. What does that mean to get 0? Negative 3. And to get 1? Negative 2. 2. OK, so we did that. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. We did all those. Just because we realized we don't want the exponent to be too big. Um, then after we raise 4 to that exponent, we add 1 to the results. So we add 1, we get 1 and a fourth, or 5 fourths. We get uh, well, plus 1, so we get 2, 5. There is our up 1. Everything's going to get 1 added to it. So with exponential functions, when you move them up 1 or down 2 or wherever it moves up and down, it's really helpful to draw that dotted line as your guide to make sure you don't do something like that. Because that is not what these functions do. So by doing that, a little more structure with the table and everything, then we get our x and our y, x, y, x, y. So the, the compounding continuously seems like most people are you know, cool with that. But uh, with, the, with the exception of just reminding you if we do that compounding continuously thing, make sure when you put r times t, whatever that winds up being in your calculator, r, put that in parentheses so that e actually gets that full whatever that is. Either multiply this together and figure out what it is and use that as your exponent, or if you're going to put it in there all at once, put parentheses. Other than that, that's, uh, people are typically oh. choosing the right formula and using it, at least writing it down correctly, for the most part. Okay. But now, if, if it's not compounded continuously, you're having a little bit of trouble here. So if it's compounded anything other than continuously or annually, once a year, if it's compounded multiple times per year but not continuously, then what formula do we use? This one right here. Yeah. yeah. Because, now I'm going to explain this again. Um, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. So I'm going to explain it again, ignoring this for just a second. So our initial amount is 25,000. And our money's going to grow. So we're going to multiply by a number that's bigger than 1. 1 plus um, our, our percentage right now, we need to express this as a decimal. So what is this as a decimal? 0 0.0329. 0 0.0329. 0 0.06. Or 6. Every other month would mean that it's 6 times. <laughs> Every 2 months, there's 12 months to spend uh, in a year. Uh, so if we divide that by 2, we get 6. All right, so I'm just going to pause there for a second. And I'm going to figure out what that is. So we're going to have 25,000. Times one point. Let's figure out what that is. Ooh, that one. Point zero three two nine divided by six. Point zero zero five. So that's. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah. So it's point five four eight. Point zero zero five four, and and then some, right? Um, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna use this exact number so that I don't round it to this because this is gonna make my my dollar not be off significantly. Okay. But if I if I take twenty five thousand times one point, whatever is it gonna be bigger or smaller? Bigger, bigger, bigger because the number that I'm multiplying by only slightly, just barely bigger than one, right? 
percent. So the amount of money that I have will be bigger, it'll be more by half a percent. If I move this, this decimal over there, it'll be half a percent. Half a percent bigger. Let's see what that looks like. Half a percent bigger. So I'm going to uh, add one to that. So now that I'm going to multiply that by twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand one hundred thirty-seven dollars and eight cents. So how much is five percent of twenty-five thousand? Or, or sorry, not five percent. Half a percent. Roughly one hundred thirty-seven. Yeah, one thirty-seven. So that's an amount of money. That's an amount of money that you have when? Every two months. Every two months. Every two close. Months. Every other month. No. So like every half. Uh, every other month would be two months. And so, so three of those would be half a year. But when will I have this much money? This much money. The first time. The first time. After. Two months. So after two months, I've got this much money. Uh, and what if, now I take this amount, and I multiply it by, I'm going to recalculate, recalculate this, 1 plus 0 0.0329 uh, over 6. Okay. When will I have this amount of money? Four months after two iterations, after two compoundings, okay. which would be the same as just multiply, you know, raising this to the second power. So <coughs> that would that would be the amount of money that I have after four months. Okay. How many times would I multiply twenty-five thousand by this number for a year? Uh, six. six. Every other month. So if it's every two months, if I do that six times, that'll be twelve months, one year. That's one year. How many years go by? 45. 45. So it's 45 years worth of six compoundings per year. So it's a total of six times 45 times that you can we compound it. I'm going to multiply 25,000 by this, which is going to add up this little half a percent this many times. So I'm going to do that all at once. And I have to recalculate this again. So 25,000. One plus point zero three nine five three two nine one nine five divided by six. Raise that, and here's part that significant number of people are making a mistake here. When you raise it to a, a, a power, and that power is two numbers multiplied together, make sure you use parentheses. Six times forty-five. Or do six times forty-five. That'll be your power. Use that as your power. Hundred nine thousand four hundred thirty-five and uh, and nine cents. So, so make sure you. Use your best to not, you know, don't, don't use 1.005, whatever, it's not on the screen anymore. Um, so it's just too much of round, that, that's going to give you big time rounding error. It's going to be off by a considerable amount, a noticeable amount. All right, any questions about that? Log base one third of eighty one. We're looking for what that is. It is a single number, okay. And uh, how can we think about this to help us figure out what this number is? Uh, the base, which is one third, raised to what power? Uh -huh. Raised to one third. Okay. 
this to something. And we wanted it to get one. Well, hopefully we're familiar with powers of three a little bit. Three to the what power is 81? Four. To the fourth power. So how do I, how do I get from one third to three? How do I use exponents to flip over the one third to be a three? Negative exponent. So a negative, like if it was negative one, it would just be three, right? If it's negative four, then it's three to the positive fourth power. So it's log base one third of 81. So if you if you write this down, just this part right here, one third to the something, that'll be helpful. It'll keep, help you keep your your mind straight as to what exactly you're looking for. Because I saw a few like you know similar problems where you're taking eighty one to some power, which can be useful in, in helping helping us get there. But that's not what we want. We don't want to take eighty one to some power. We don't want to take some number to the one third power. Um, what we want to know is what power do we use on one third to get 81? That's what we're trying to figure out. We do the logarithm we're looking for the exponent, the exponent of the base. Okay. Questions? Um, Anyone asking any questions from the homework before we review them? Go for it. So there are these properties based on whether or not we've got uh, a product or a quotient or something raised to a power inside the log. Um, and I just took a look, quick look here. Most everybody used the quotient property to get here, at least here. That's good, because we got a, a quotient there and uh, we get the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. We want to fully expand it. We also have to recognize what we have here is the log. It's got, we've got the log, and inside the log, we've got a product. We've got three times y. But the thing that we also have to keep in mind when we expand that part out, that that thing there is, you know, like I boxed it in here. What, whatever this gets expanded to be is exactly equivalent to inside the box. So what I'm saying here is whatever this winds up being, we're still subtracting all of it, the whole thing. So if we use the, the product property to expand this out, log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of y, we got to subtract the whole thing. The whole thing is, you know, that, that whole expression is the same as log base 4 of 3y, and log base 4 of 3y is being subtracted, so we need to subtract the whole thing. We can leave it like that, we can distribute the negative, and we'll have minus log base 4 of 3 minus log base 4 of y. So, 
had in mind. And if there's a piece that gets expanded, then the same thing, whatever's happening to it, needs to still be happening. That's this one. Okay. Uh, I recommend first starting with uh, the coefficients you might have and then working left to right. property that we talked about is log base b of m to the n. We can take this out in front. And now it becomes a coefficient. Or we can go the other way. Okay. We're going this way, we're condensing. This way, we're expanding. But we're condensing. So we're, we're trying to get it so it's just a log of one expression. So for this one, we use that property. The, the coefficient can come up and be the power of 2. So we have log base 4 of 2 to the fifth. Use that same property on this guy right here. We got log base 4 of x to the seventh and log of base 4 of y to the fourth. So we're still adding these all together. And then I would say work from left to right would be the easiest way to go. So if we want to condense these, we're going to put these together. We're going to put them together as log of base 4 of. Because of, it, because of addition, it's going to be log base 4 of what? Um, 2 times 7. 2 times 7? No. So we're using this uh, property, this product property, log base b of something times something. So here's where we are. We've got two things added together, so you go and put them back together. And so they're going to be multiplied together. 2x. 2x? 2x. 2x. 2 to the 5th. 2 to the 5th, right? This thing, 2 to the 5th, times this thing, x to the 7th. Or this could be 32x to the 7th, because 2 to the 5th is 32. Add log base 4 of y to the 4th. So it should just be times x to the 7th. Yeah, now we've got that thing, 32x to the 7th, times this other thing, y to the 4th. So log base 4 of 32x to the 7th, y to the 4th. So we take <laughs> that guy right there, multiply it by that. So I saw a few. What's that? Oh, okay. I got you. Just do that. Um, so I saw a few, um, I don't know, like all the exponents here at the end, or tried to add them together before you've put the, that coefficient out in front up as the exponent. What you can't do here, like, notice for this property to be used, it's got to be the log of whatever plus the log of whatever. There's, there's no room for things being multiplied. So if there's things to be multiplied first, let's bring them bring them up into the exponent so we have nothing out in front of the log, and then we can use this property. Until we do that, this property doesn't apply because this property doesn't have any uh, anything to say about this seven or this five. What do you, what do, you do with them? Well, before you use the product property, you use the the power property. How's that? Good? Any questions? Okay. Um, let's solve for x here. I 
let's go back like and, and be kind of basic here. If we had e to the x equals five, then um, I don't know what x is supposed to be just off the top of my head, right? But this is just kind of a rephrasing of what logarithms do, what they ask, right? Like how would we write this in logarithmic form? Log Of five, right? Because this is this is exactly what it's saying. E to what is five? E to the what power is five? That power. That's the power we're looking for. And now if we can take log base e of five, then we'll know what x is. Can we take log base e of five? Yeah, no. Because the log base e is that natural log, and you have that on your calculator. Natural log of five. There you go. Let's see what it is. The natural log of five is one point six zero nine. means it must be e to the 1.609 gives us 5. And I'll take e to the power, even though I do 1.609, which is, I'm rounding it, so it's not going to be quite exact. I would need to use like all of this or as many decimal places as possible. It should be close. It's very close to 5. That's what I'm saying. It's approximately. So if we can do that, if we can get it to this stage and then rewrite it using the natural log, let's look at that here. What can we do to get it to that point? Minus two. Minus two on both sides, e to the x plus five equals 25. Now it looks a lot like this. It's just that the exponent is, has more in it, but Let's see what happens. Let's try and just rewrite this in exponent in a logarithmic form. What would that look like? Natural log. So the natural log of 25. And if I want to get an x by itself, subtract five. Subtract five. The natural log of 25, whatever that is, minus five. Natural log of 25. Make sure you close those parentheses before you subtract 5. X is negative 1.78. Any questions? And the same goes for any other base. We're going to stick to bases of e and 10, and some maybe of uh, 2, but e and 10 are our bases. So if we had uh, 10 to the 3x plus 7 equals 45, let's say 450 here. Uh, well, if it were just 10 to the some power equals something, then that's like exponential form of what I could rewrite using logarithmic form. First, I have to do what, though? Subtract. Right, so we got 10 to the 3x equals 443. Okay, now I'm saying 10 to the what is 443, but that's the same as saying log. What? No. It's log 443. Log 443? What's the base? Ten. Ten. Yeah, it, it, uh, if you don't write any number down there, then you are assuming that it's ten. Is that what you're using? Yeah. Yeah, the assumption that the base would be ten if you don't write anything down here. That's why. Here on your calculator, when you press log, it doesn't have a base. That base is assumed to be ten. So if we take log base ten of 443, 
that's, so 3x is equal to 2.6468. And what do we do to find x? Divide by 3. And divide by 3, so divide this by 3. It's 0.882. And that's about what x is worth. Exponents that we like are 1, 0, 1. x plus 5 is the exponent. We take 1 third to the x plus 5. 1 third of the negative one, what's that? 3. three. And to the 0. One. And to the 1. One over, three. 1 over 3. And our x values are going to be, to get negative 1, we're going to need this to be. To get zero, to get what? Uh, and that's it. There's, there's nothing else to do. So negative one, two, three, four, comma one third. Uh, negative five, one. Negative six. Two, three, three. So just plotting those three points might remind us. Smaller numbers if I raise it to a bigger and bigger power. Okay, what else? What is that? What is it asking for? What do you have to raise 5 to to get 12? Okay. So, to raise 5 to something to get 12. What do you think that number is? 5 to the... So this is looking for, you know, this is saying 5 to the what is 12. Well, the statement here that it's making is between 1 and 2, just like you said. And the reasoning, you know, if I needed to explain it, which I'm asking you to do, well, 5 to the 1 is 5, and 5 to the 2 is 25. So the exponent that we use, that's what this is asking for, what exponent do we use on 5? It's got to be between 1 and 2 somewhere. Because we don't want 5, we don't want 25, we want 12, which is between 5 and 25. So the exponent we use must be between 1 and 2. Does that make more sense? The natural log of one thing is equal to the natural log of some other thing. What do you think we could uh, say after that? These, this thing, this thing, they must be the same thing because if it's on one side it's natural log of five, the other side must be the natural log of five. Whatever it is, you've got to be taking the natural log of the same thing for them to be equal. So x plus seven equals three x minus five. If, we, if we've got 
two things uh, in the same function, in, in, in the natural log, and they're equal to each other, then those things must be equal to each other. Same thing like 5 squared equals x squared. Well, if I, if I square 5 and I get the same thing as squaring x, then x must be 5. It's kind of a natural conclusion. Um, same as like 30. If it was like 3 to the 12th equals 3 to the something, then that something would have to be 12. Can we put all these 3's together? How do we combine their exponents? Add them. Add them all together. So 3 to the 3 plus x plus x minus 1 equals 3 to the 12. So all this stuff must be equal to 12. So 3 plus 2x minus 1 equals 12. 2x, we put those together, plus 2 equals 12, subtract 2, 2x equals 10, x equals 5. x is inside the logarithm, so can we rewrite it in a different form so it's no longer the, the in, or inside the parentheses in? The log form could be rewrite it. Yeah. Exponential form? Yeah. Oh, that little um, 5 squared is equal to 3x plus 1. Mm -hmm. Now 3x plus 9 just equals 25. And uh, so there's nothing we can solve that for you. Track 9 divided by 3. was like inside of one logarithm, then I could just rewrite it in exponential form. Can I put these together into one logarithm? Yeah. Oh, so how can I put these two logarithms together? two logs together with the same base, then how do we put together their, their insides? Multiply. Multiply them. Yeah. Right? When we're adding, when we multiply those things together, if we're subtracting, we would divide them. We multiply them together, negative x times x plus 12, we're going to distribute that. We have negative x squared minus 12x equals 5. Distribute that negative x to the x of the 12. And now 2 to the 5th equals negative x squared minus 12x. This will be 32. I'm going to add x squared and add 12x to both sides. x squared plus 12x plus 32 equals 0. Now it's a quadratic equation. 